Okay, so step number five in the 11 steps to sell your property for a premium price. Um, this is quite a crucial one, really, because it's all about passive buyer marketing. So yes, active buyers who are really, really keen, they'll be searching the portals and right mirror every single day. But you, you want to hit 100% of the market, not just the 98% that apparently start their search online. Um, and there's two main areas for passive buyer marketing. One is social media and Facebook, particularly. Um, I'll talk about that. And the second one is the, the, the for sale board. Paul will talk about that. So Facebook, right? Thing is with Facebook is there's been situations that I've had where people have called up to view a house. We track everywhere that our leads come from. And someone says, oh, you know, I just saw it on Facebook. It popped up on the wall. I've, I had no intention of moving, but the house looks lovely. Can I view it on Saturday? Um, that would have probably never come if if we allowed if we relied solely on right move. Um, other situations is people tagging their friends in, so people see a house. Mums at the school gate have had a discussion saying, "Oh, you know, I need a bigger house." A house pops up on a lady's wall. She tags in the lady looking to move. All of a sudden, you've got more reach for your house. So it's all about passive buyer marketing and as many eyeballs as possible. You've got to cover the portals. You've got to be on on the premium right move package and Passive buyer marketing is so crucial. Now, Paul, what's the benefits? Because I, I think as well, some people this day they say, oh, I don't need a for sale board because everyone looks online. What's the benefits to having still having a for sale board outside your house? Yeah, that's, that, that's a very, very good point. There's still many, many reasons to have a for sale sign board. Still to this day, people go on a Sunday drive if they want to move to a particular area. So they will choose their roads, they will go for a drive up and down to see what it's like to to actually want to see if they actually want to live there mm. and if they see that for sale sign board they'll make a note of it and then they most probably then give the agent a call or at least go and write me and see more details and then make a view to see it and that ties in well with why we answer our calls 24 7 3, 6, 5. so clearly we need a break at times as well estate agents also need some rest but as a company we answer our calls 24 7 3, 6, 5 for that for that one person at, on a sunday at four o'clock that he sees a board calls the office our, our back office support team answer the call, get name and number, so the agent can call back when they're back in the office. Absolutely. I interrupted. Sorry, Paul, yeah, no, good points. Good points. And also uh, for a for sale sign board, if the people are walking to school or they're walking back from work or to the shop and they see it for sale sign board, they actually may know someone who wants to move to the area again, and they will tell their friends that there's a property up for sale. And that's another very very good way of getting more viewings. There is a, an, a one more point as well is that someone actually may be waiting for this particular road they want to move to or if that house ever ever comes on the market that's the one they want so they're not really really looking but if that one comes on they want to buy it so having the, having the for sale sign there tells this person that it's now coming on the market and let's go for it and that's massive because i once sold a house and you know if it happens once it can happen again so i'm not saying you're going to get 25 viewings from a for sale board or your facebook campaign but it's about covering all bases to make sure you're really covering the whole market. I once sold a house um, and the lady rung up and said, can I view that house, I'm gonna buy it. And I was like, okay, cool. It's very rare that people know they're gonna buy a house without even seeing it. So I said, no, I went in it 10 years ago and I've been I've been literally saying to my husband, the minute the house comes on the market, we're gonna buy it. We're gonna remortgage our current house so we don't have to have a chain and we're gonna sell our house later down the line once we bought this house. So you just have to make sure you're on Facebook, you're on Twitter, you know, you're getting maximum coverage for your house, um, you've got your portals covered, you're, you're priced correctly, you're presented correctly, you've got your viewing strategy in place. There's a lot of people out there now, and I hear it time and time again, you know, just just choose any estate agent because it will just sell. You know, your house is really saleable, like every house is saleable, of course it is, every house will sell for a certain price. What you need to focus on is what's going to get you the premium price and the highest price. And I can tell you now that the difference between a good and a bad agent can be four or five percent of the asking price or the marketing price. Um, so step five, that was a good one. Good. Step six is all about monitoring and improving your marketing as whilst you're on the market. We'll see you in that video. Don't forget if you haven't seen the other videos, watch back from steps one and two and three and four and five, and we'll see you soon. Take care.